<laughs> yeah, unfortunately. This thing, this monster, yes. Monster, it really is a monster. Um, just insidious, the, you know, inter intergalactic criminal number one, you know. So you make a list of what's the worst thing on planet Earth. Um, this. These glib things. <laughs> These things that uh, have no respect. No, there's no limit to their um, duplicity and dishonesty <coughs> to... Come on, cat. Get the hell out of here. Um, just... Uh, it's just such an insult. They, you know, there's no depth to the insult. And, you know, I sort of thought about that in the past. Like, you think about these characters in history, you know, the Mangalas and the, the generals who, you know, send 10,000 men into a battle knowing that 5,000 of them aren't coming back. And, uh, you know, somehow they eat their dinner that night. And you say, what are these people? You know, presidents who seem so... Uh, frivolous. Oh, I'm gonna go golfing while I just decided to kill a few people over there. Um, just no impact, no, um, uh, you know, they, they look at it, they, they see it, and it doesn't, it just doesn't mean anything. They, they don't take any account for it. They don't spend any time imagining and saying, wait, would I trade what I have for that? Um, like like a, it's like a gambler who's you know hundreds of thousands of dollars ahead in Las Vegas and he pisses it all away you're saying what kind of brain does that what kind of brain is so is, is so um, obnoxiously arrogant <laughs> you know to think they can get away with it that they're immune uh, that uh, uh, I don't even know how to put it um, you know, that they've seen the tragedy and they just don't register that this is going to reoccur. And then to have a little bit of humility. I mean, it's not like I'm asking much from a human being. I'm not, I'm not asking them to, you know, pretend it doesn't, uh, uh, it's not even asking for a pretense. I'm not, I'm asking them to, give, to, to, to acknowledge what? That they're selfish? Fine, acknowledge that you're selfish, but don't pretend that the, the thing you're trading in, the thing you're walking on, the thing you're, you're degrading, you're raping, um, isn't real. I mean, to, to sit there and, I mean, that's what this, he's, this real crime is, is that he's just discounted the victims. He's degraded and turned them into nothing uh, so he can just keep marching and s squishing their skulls. He's not, you know, gassing Jews, he's, but he's just, it's the same difference. He's just saying they're nothing. The victims are nothing. Okay? Uh, every one of them who screams in horror or is terrified or is uh, got it the worst. Uh, and, you know, he's seen people. He saw his mother die. Apparently no impact. It was fine. It was worth the potato soup she made. Yes, the potato soup was so fine that it, it was, you know, her misery and suffering, no problem. Just do it again. Throw it, put it on her again and again and again and again. Just keep doing it. I'm sorry. I don't get it. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, just, <laughs> yeah, I don't see how you rationally look at the game. Look at the, the broken and sit there and say... I can win. I'm winning. Just a horrible, disgusting creature. I just uh, replied to a comment by a fellow by the name of John Yin. Uh, yeah, pleasant fellow, actually. Quite, uh, yes, uh, you know, fatally morbid, but, um, realistic, still living his life, still swimming through it, but not lying about what it is. Just something you swim through. Um, I replied in my usual snappy kind of way. Um, I said, now you probably replied with a traditional cliche. I said, uh, 
that uh, life deniers, universe deniers, whatever you want to call it, people that essentially say that life isn't worth living, or that this universe is unfair, or that um, the uh, universe is in some way profane, even. <clears throat> yeah, well, or that say, well, this is at least bad enough to look at seriously. If you're going to pretend you don't know what it is, and you know, but you do know it has this really bad thing in it, then your first obligation is to be cautious. Caution first. You just don't recklessly run into its mouth. Right? I, I mean, we can at least say there's some dinosaur here. Okay? There's something with big monstrous teeth. And you just don't walk out into the open and say, I challenge the, the monster. Even though you're claiming you don't know exactly how bad it is. What is that? You're saying that there's something irresponsibly uh, cautious? Is that what you're saying? These people are irresponsibly cautious or irrationally cautious or um, wrongly cautious? And you don't even have uh, enough fairness to reflect for a moment and maybe recognize, no, that it's you in the face of the obvious negatives pretending, and that's all you're doing, pretending <laughs> you've done the math and you haven't and that it does create suffering horror death look, look at the way he talks about it look at this i mean can you can you can you think about somebody more mangalesque anybody you know he's, it's he's like a gleeful the suffering is so good i'm so glad the cancer tortured my mother yes i'm irish and i loved my mother and Yes, the cancer's okay. The nuns are not okay. Okay, the little naggy nuns about hell. Oh, gee, that's a horror. I gotta go punch the nuns. But I'm not gonna punch cancer. I'm not gonna punch the dying process. And look at the, the glee he has on his face. It's like some fanatical Christian talking about suffering for Jesus. Jesus loves your suffering. He wants to eat it for dinner. I'm just saying, you can't get more monstrous than something that eats suffering. And this guy eats it. He, he feeds on it. Look at him. Look at him. He's feeding on even just saying the word suffering. He's feeding on it. Like I said, there was no dinosaur more insidious than this monster. There is no crocodile more horrible than this piece of shit. There is no AIDS virus more destructive and evil than this thing. Use all that kind of thing. It's part of the deal. It's part of the deal. I said so. And uh, that's all that matters is I said so. That's all that matters to him. He says so. I will throw people into the deal um, without their consent based on my notion. Suffering. Mm -hmm. So this is nothing new. It goes back to Manichaeism and probably before that, probably long before that. I look at uh, these, um, I don't know, life denying, or I guess. Yeah, well, I look at you also like you're a bug. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you're a bug. Okay, a disgusting, grotesque monstrosity created by disgusting and broken culture. Um, what creates monsters like you, who aren't paused by six-year-olds with cancer, who aren't paused watching their parents die, who aren't paused by it, F afraid of it, scared of it? Just send them in, to throw them away, piss on their graves. Deniers, universe deniers, whatever you want to call it. Uh, unfortunately, People we had essentially a say that problem. life isn't worth living, or that this universe is unfair, or yes. that um, <laughs> the uh, universe is in some way profane, even, in that it does create suffering, horror, death, disease, all that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, look, look at this. Part of the
the deal. <laughs> this is nothing new. It's, it's back to manichaeism and probably before manichaeism. that. Manichaeism. How, how interesting. That. So, yes, yes. Um, uh, yeah, it's nothing new. Right. The theory of evolution is nothing new. Um, the evidence of what the mechanism is is nothing new. I mean, it's just, you know, this, this, this whole idea that you want to try to paint what the alternative philosophy as if it's the antiquity one. No, you're the one living in antiquity. You're the one living with delusional notions of silver linings and uh, do it for the service of God. Your God is just the default. You have this, this incredible God of the default. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just what, what the hell is that? Um, except the, the consequence of trivial thinking. All right, I'll try some other strategy here. I look at uh, these, um, I don't know, life-denying or I guess Gnostic or whatever philosophies, and even though you know, they seem to crystallize in the Near East or Persia or whatever a few thousand years ago, and so that's when they were. That's at their peak. The the crystallization again, long before they had all the evidence we have of the fact of evolution, the non-existence of demons or spirits or ethers or any of that stuff. Um, he says that's its crystallization. That's that's when it it hit its its apex of of logical argumentation. Yeah, that's I think nonsense. Demonstrated non demonstrably nonsense. Just a lie is what that is. Okay. Yeah, the apex is now, buddy. Three thousand, whatever. Um, for whatever reason, they strike me as probably being part of a truly ancient view of reality. Okay, so the truly ancient view of reality, he's claiming that so we can know through all of human history what people have done. They've lived in absolute shit. They fought through it because of notions of God's purpose. They've actually explicitly been told that they're, they're, it's their obligation to suffer for God. Um, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, they've all, that, that, always, that has been a dominant um, uh, thing that has kept them fighting through uh, the, the, the mechanism. And the fact, too, that killing yourself was always unpleasant. So they never really had that option. They didn't have condoms, so they couldn't really stop replicating. Um, I mean, this is just such a, a canard. Yes, people, it has occurred to people throughout history that this doesn't seem good enough. Not nearly good enough. <laughs> okay? But the, to say that its apex was in some ignorant notion what new fact do you have, buddy? Why don't you tell us what the modern new thinking provides? What is it? So you've killed God, the, the only thing that kept most people alive, and you're, you're going to argue to me that if I took God away from the people that have it now, they would say, oh yes, life is just so purposeful. They would say, oh yeah, this makes perfectly good sense. You don't think their reaction might be, well, now I really have nothing to live for. Yeah, you're just so, you're so dishonest. Fucking slandering liar. That may literally go back to the beginning of time, or the, I shouldn't say the beginning of time, the beginning of humanity actually thinking about these sorts of things. I can actually see... Uh, yeah, well, right. It might go. It go. Might might have occurred to human beings, and exactly, we can see that in the history. That's why the invention of some sort of narrative that gave it purpose. They had to invent a purpose, because it was clear there was no function in the game of kill, chew, chew, shit, shit, fuck, fuck. That this 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 recipe was totally inadequate to creating anything meaningful, useful. Purposeful, efficient. Zombies, caveman, actually thinking along those lines that this universe is a bad place. I'm reminded of uh, a scene from a truly fantastic French Canadian movie called The Robe, where the paragon of civilization, a 
Jesuit priest goes to Canada and interacts with the native people there and discovers just how different the aliens are to the French. Oh, how exciting. Yeah, it just sounds fantastic. Canadian movies. Mm. The French being the, you know, the epitome of civilization in those days. At least according to Europeans. <clears throat> um, and there's a scene in the movie where um, a native Canadian, or I don't know if he would have called himself a Canadian, probably just a Huron or something, uh, he's about to be ridden down and killed, I think. It is a battle going on or something like this. And in a completely sort of resigned kind of way, which, you know, if you know anything about the native Canadians, you, you understand that kind of... Ugh. Ugh. I, I didn't, sorry, I didn't know the video was going to be full of this crap. Ugh, fuck. I don't know, indifference to the world that strikes us as bordering on apathy. I'm, I rather imagine that somebody who's familiar with the Australian Aborigines would... Yeah, yeah, they'd, they'd say they're stupid. They're dim-witted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's the height of intelligence to be indifferent. Oh, I see. No, sorry, fail. Now, this is not working very well. Come on, mouse. Come on. Probably see a similar kind of attitude. And he just says to the priest, or whoever he's talking to at the time, I haven't seen the movie in 20 years, but he just says, Look, this world is an evil place. Let them kill me, what do I care? That to me strikes me as, you know, as yeah, what? Realistic. That's right. You're going to get killed in the end anyway. All right. So it's just a matter of time. And so it's all, all that all that really matters is is there any compelling agenda? Do you have some compelling thing to finish? Some some grand accomplishment? Do you have any sticks you need to finish gluing together? Uh, you know. And it's only the people who are somehow incomplete, unfinished, imperfected, uh, they haven't, uh, whatever, done it enough. Those are the ones who are still horny. Those are the ones still playing as if they're accomplishing something. So you're the one owned by your desire. Totally owned. A truly ancient view of reality. That the world is just bad. Let's just get out of here. Um, maybe it is. There you go. Maybe it is. So, so, so that's your glib response, right? So you're you're saying there's that some modern theory of life. Again, what is your modern evidence? The modern evidence is evolution, Darwin, and Freud. Now, which one of those? Where where in there do you have room? Okay, for some sort of improved perception of our fate. They basically blueprint uh, uh, the, the slave puppet nature of our whole psychology. They've ab they abolish this idea of free anything, including will. They annihilate um, anything but trivial function. So, I mean, how does this, how, what, what modern information, what modern philosophical notions are you saying have improved our circumstance? And if you go back to Nietzsche, well, you're not going to find anything there, right? Because his was just a defeatist resort to, to the default. He completely just copped out and resorted to the default. You could, you could probably argue that Jesus Christ was doing the same thing. Uh, yeah, we can't seem to manage this civilization thing, so let's just do as the birds do. God takes care of them. <clears throat> but that was a lie too, right? Because God doesn't take care of the birds. It kills them in, in huge numbers, annihilates them before they have a, a chance to even peep out their little complaints. Before the little birds can grow big enough to even peep out a complaint, okay, they're, they're squished and consumed by the monster. And you say, well, uh, that's a much better world. There's nobody complaining. Yeah, because nobody can complain. Fuck. 
I mean, fuck. You are a dumb motherfucker. Um, I certainly think that that attitude, that idea, will be with us as long as existence is with us. Uh, again, the latest... Ah, oh, right, so the idea that there'll be somebody intelligent enough to point out, gee, you're totally owned by a nuisance psychology, you're pretty much acting like bugs, and you will accomplish absolutely nothing but create more opportunity for horrific suffering. And they don't applaud. Yes. I'm not applauding. You suck. You'd be scary dangerous. Come on, mouse. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to get this mouse to move. There, there, move. But it moved to the wrong place. Well, anyway, I just give up on that. Installation on that is, I guess, in the NOZ to nausea by South, where, you know, Conte, I think that was his name, just was revolted by reality. So. <clears throat> I think that this is not a new idea. And I yeah, yeah, whatever. And what's more revolting is people who don't take that seriously, who don't recognize that there's some cause. First off, there is some cause for pause. There is some cause for pause. You know, yeah, if I make it into a rhyme, now can you get it? And what I'm asking from you is what is your reason, okay? Let's find a rhyme for it, for recklessness. So you don't think there's any cause for pause. You think there's reason for reckless. And what I'm saying is there's, yeah, those are two hugely different concepts and ideas. And I'm trying to understand how the fuck, in any kind of reasonable way or sensible way or logical way, you justify spitting on this cause for pause and embracing this reason to reckless. I don't think it's an idea one even can call old even. It just seems to be part and parcel of the human condition. To sort of be torn between the idea. Is the universe good or bad? Is re Yeah, well, again, you're not displaying any of this tornness. You're not ex displaying or arguing for any of the behavior that would be commensurate to some reason to be torn and then some respect for the torn. Where's your respect for it? Yeah, it's not there. That's right. It's exactly that. It's a glib nothing. An empty. A big goose egg. Is reality propane? Or is it just what it is? Or is, it, is reality a good thing? The, uh, giddy... The, the fact that it is what it is, is not the... Those aren't the two opposite opinions. It is what it is, or it is intrinsically and fundamentally consuming more than it produces. Those two are not the alternatives. Okay? The person who uh, believes it's a destructive and negative force still believes it is what it is. So saying it is what it is is kind of porridge, porridge. I mean, it's not a very deep or, or, or well-constructed philosophical concept. It is what it is. That is saying pretty much absolutely nothing. Yeah, I, Christian types, the Ned Flanders types, always remind me of the more extreme life deniers and that they're British. Yeah, whatever. The Mangala types, the you know, malicious general types, the insensitive president types, all the all the people just running over other people's suffering, stepping on it, consuming it. The slave owner types. Yeah, that's what you remind me of. You horn an absolute view of things onto a universe that doesn't seem to go along with absolutes. Okay, that, I mean, right there. What, I mean, can, where, where's your evidence of that? Please, show me something in the universe that's not absolute. Show me this unreliable moon and this unreliable earth spinning and this unreliable trees growing. And where, show me these, 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 these vulnerable to some unabsolute statement. Show me, where is it? What, are you going to bring up the quantum? 
Where, where, do you, where do you get this crap? How do you speak this shit without your face breaking? I mean, how can you say something so absolutely stupid? I mean, absolutely unrepresented by the evidence. Huh? How do you do that? How do you do this shit with a straight fucking face? Like, I just made an argument. Yeah, okay. No, that's not an argument. That's a pile of absolute nonsense. Most everything is pretty absolute except for a little tiny, tiny bit where we can't, you know, we don't have a microscope uh, big enough. Oh, God, you're just such a liar. Oops, more error codes here. Oops, that ain't gonna work. Okay. Oh, yeah, should have should have practiced this ahead of time, maybe. Oh, now it's doing some weird shit. Where's the mouse? Come on, mouse. Where are you? Uh-oh. Hopefully I didn't hit a link. There we go. Um, and that's the interesting thing about, say, the Abrahamic con uh, uh, conventional view of God in the universe, i.e. the world is split into good and bad. The universe, the cosmos, reality itself is split into good and bad. Um, and, say, the Eastern or Indic ones, which kind of have a bit of that here and there. As I say, my favorites, the Jains, tend to... Yeah, uh, again, I don't know, why Why? Do, why is this pigeonholing necessary? Why does somebody in arguing a simple conclusion have to defend, like, why, again, if you argue for socialism, you always have to defend Stalin, you always have to defend Castro, you always have to defend whoever the other despot of socialism would be, Pol Pot, whatever. Is that the way it is? So, so I can't make an argument about life's futility without having to defend Buddhism or Hindus or some other loony. I mean, this is just such a, a fucking nasty and dirty way to make an argument. Mangala. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, that was the wrong keyboard there. Definitely see um, the universe being fundamentally, not even bad, but just something that we don't want anything to do with, ultimately. Um, just a pointless treadmill, I guess, is the way the Jains would see it. They would, don't see it, I think, as truly horrible, but just why bother with it? Um, that's nothing new. And it's, as I say, it's present in most traditions. It's more marked in the West than it is in the East. Well, again, I just know exactly how you, how you could have a tradition of knowing life is not worth investing in, and yet investing in it so sufficiently that you keep creating, you know, the victims. So you're saying that this Jainist philosophy is somehow not generating its own kind, that it's always being the spawn of some other philosophy, and the Jainists always have to show up to say, God, you people got it so fucking wrong. And even that's not a story. So here you're saying that this, a, a, a philosophy has had to endure without it being bred into people, without mommy saying so. And people had to gravitate to the philosophy from some default position they were raised in. And they had to migrate to it. And you're not at all impressed by that. So it's been an enduring philosophy that hasn't depended on uh, 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 a nepotistic or a familial uh, regeneration. It's completely generated out of something else. It's always converted its members. And you don't think that's kind of impressive? You know, if you want to call it the West or the East, but you know, a lot of what we would call, or I, what we might have called in the past, primitive societies seem to merge good and bad as opposed to splitting them into halal and haram, you know. Yeah, whatever. So, again, this means something to people. So when he says something like merging good and bad, there's some way you can possibly do that? You really can do that? I, I think you should be merged. <laughs> yeah, I think you really should. You need a good merging. That which is allowed and that which is forbidden. The interesting thing about that is, I was talking yesterday about Gnosticism, or not Gnosticism, although it is certainly related, mysticism. Um, Gnosticism, I guess, would be a form of 
mysticism or with mystical tendencies based on the idea that reality is profane, the universe is profane. Um, but the interesting thing, mysticism seems to split everybody on that one issue. Is the universe bad or good? <coughs> and then this extends... Yeah, well, whatever. This isn't, that's, this isn't really the subject. The, this, the, you know, it really isn't. I mean, it's, it's not the universe, okay? I mean, people understand that there's, there's functions and there's activities that take place. And there's no point in, in calculating the universe to make a conclusion about bugs created on planet Earth and what this function is. So you don't need to go, you don't need to, to label the universe with something to get to the nature of this thing. Uh, whatever. It just, it's just part of your game. So, you know, instead of dealing with the individual rape, you'll call it some social function or some, you'll, you'll label it some other activity than what it is. And we know what the activity at question here is, is the non-consensual imposition of perpetual gameplay far beyond philosophy and everything else. Uh, as I say, H.P. Lovecraft, Thomas the Gothi, fiction, the universe, uh, uh, the call of Cthulhu, uh, where they discover what really is in store for us. Right, right. And so in the, in the more modern version would be uh, Benatar, which you called absurd. So again, but what counter-argument did you provide to Benatar? Oh, absolutely none. Uh, how did you refute his argument? Nothing. Yeah, right. Fair cop. And there doesn't seem to be much we can do to stop it ever happening. Uh, wake, waking up and instituting his reign on the earth. The interesting thing is the way that Cthulhu's reign on the earth is, is portrayed is um, not necessarily totally horrific. It's a time of ecstatic. Well, who cares? We know what the issue is here. Again, you're the one responsible for perpetuating it, okay? And you don't want to you don't want to see the blood on your hands. You don't want to take any responsibility. You want to just pretend it's the universe did it. You don't want to sit there and take personal responsibility that no, it was you who did it. You made it possible. You opened the door. You did everything to make the crime happen. You put the label on the Jew. You put you built the concentration camp. You put the Jew in it. It's on you, asshole, okay? You're making it happen. Nobody else, nothing else is making it happen but your psychology. Period. Period. Joy and murderous violence. Um, where everything is mixed up. Where good and evil are existing in exactly the same sort of measure in the universe, and they're mixed. <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's all mixed in the end. It doesn't matter who does the suffering and all this crap, and you can say that shit forever and ever and ever. But, again, the, the fact that you're not appreciating it, in my opinion, is made obvious. This glib attitude, again, if you had any appreciation for it, if you had any personal knowledge of it, you would know that it's reason for pause. If you had ever been eaten by a Tyrannosaurus, I can tell you, okay, you don't want to play with those fuckers. And you're just sitting there glibly saying, no, I, I think it's, I, I, can, I can do it. It's no problem. And then you're pushing your kid into the fucking Tyrannosaurus's mouth. You're just such an asshole. Um, <clears throat> that would be, I guess, the Gnostic tradition, though. Um, the world is profane and uh, the universe is profane and forbidden and horrible and the best thing to do. Yeah, let's, let's understand that people drew these conclusions because they live some life, right? They, they're given fairy tales as a kid, then they live a little bit of life, they watch a few of their brothers and sisters die horribly, then they watch their parents die horribly, they, then they personally experience a, a microbe infecting some part of their body or some other kind of thing, and they draw this rational conclusion that this is one hell of a goddamn brutal, idiotic, uh, smash em, crash em, bash em game that we're playing. And what exactly am I accomplishing in the end? Oh, that's right, nothing. Easy is to not find out, uh, not deal with it. 
again, the first line of the Call of Cthulhu is the, I've often thought that the most merciful thing in life is the inability of the human mind to correlate all of its contents, or if I, I'm paraphrasing Lovecraft, but again, it's the old idea, don't go in that room because of what you might find. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, and, and the, you're again some kind of glib kind of argument about how yes, you're somehow not supposed to do that. Exactly that. You're supposed to account for what you're doing. This is the sensible response to the circumstance. There is monsters, and you have to explain why we are going to challenge the monster. And that again, that ties in with mysticism. Don't do mysticism really don't want to know what's going on in reality. That's I don't know. Is that now, now he's just blended two subjects. I don't know how the fuck he did, just did that. What does what mysticism have to do with uh, 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 recognizing, uh, uh, being bold enough to, to contemplate hard and, and thoughtfully um, the mechanism of your own debaucherous ambition and the futility of the function and the distribution of the pain and suffering. Yeah, How, what does that have to do with mysticism? Oh, I don't think it has a motherfucking thing to do with it. These cavemen, uh, if we find out. But I can also see <laughs> Zapke's caveman having a half-brother on the other side of the lake who has the same moment of clarity, and instead of discovering that he's living in some sort of legati like nephiscurial universe, Okay, this ought to be good, right? Because he's going to somehow give you a vision of how this fable, this Goldilocks story of his, is somehow reasonable. So this ought to be good. Here's the counter-argument of why life's worth living. He has the moment of clarity that doesn't horrify him, but he goes, Wow, I like it here. Okay, yeah. so, so that's what you say when you're watching your mother vomiting her last breath. That's, that's what you say. I like it here. Yeah. That was good. More. <laughs> you know, so, so yeah, that's his, that's his realistic answer to uh, a six-year-old with doing chemotherapy. That's his response to it. I like it here. That's, that's taking account. That's context. That's recognizing context. It's just to say, me hungry, chew, chew, fuck, fuck. I mean, really are back to Nietzsche. Nothing. Vacuous. Um, and he was filled with an ecstatic joy that blew his mind up. No matter what happens here. Yeah, no matter what happens. Yes, exactly. No matter what, no, no matter how many little things are tortured and torments, no matter how much guts come puking out of somebody's mouth, it's all okay. It's fun fun. I mean, it, this is just so fucking glib. You just can't get eviler than that. To look at the face of that, to think, to remember your mother dying, and to say this shit. It's just so grotesque. It's undone at death. I can do anything I want and anything can be done to me. It doesn't matter. Uh, Omnia transient. Right, so that's his counter argument. So now we're all the way back to his it doesn't matter. So the Holocaust didn't matter. Slavery didn't matter. You could do it some more. You can do it all you want in the future. Rape, 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 all day fucking goddamn long, because it doesn't matter because your victim's going to die. So there, that's the solution to all our problems. Make as big a mess as you want, and don't worry about it, because the mess is going to be dissolved by the acid of time. And people like this shit. They reward these videos. I say people, I mean really, the things on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, there's no reason to say people. Um, because, yeah, they're probably not really people. Um, that's a fascinating thing, isn't it? And it's, Mysticism seems to aim at 
both of these. And again, all of these um, sort of puritanical Salem-like ideas that don't. Yeah, whatever. Mysticism is just another word for silver liningism, uh, pot of goldism. It's just this bullshit that somehow we're going to manufacture func function and cures and salvation out of some kind of crap. We're going to pick some herbs and mix them in a pot and put a little eye of newt in and all, oh, everything will be okay. Now it won't. Don't go looking for what's behind the appearances of reality because of what you might find. Okay, so again, I, you know, is this sellable? Is this something that human beings are really doing? They're sitting there saying, don't go looking. Because it seems like it's so obvious that mysticism just grows out of the facts. The lies and the, the pot of gold theory is more sensible the more looking you do. No, I think it's the other way around. The more looking you do, the more you see just how Borgish this whole idiotic nonsense is. Borgite. Glibist Borgist. Gliborgiate. You're a glib gliborgite. There's that attitude. Then there's the other attitude that says really what we see around us is not really worth it but not because it's profane but because there's something that is so much better behind it all the fundamental reality behind everything yeah so somebody knows what that is and, and there's some theory some rational theory i can go look up somewhere oh yeah it'll be what jainist or something yeah right the buddhists would one of Plato's cave dwellers be driven mad with horror and have his mind blown out when he's dragged up into the sun and uh, dragged up into the sunlight and sees everything for what it is when he's been safely down in his womb-like cave all this time? Um, or would he be like Arjuna in the Gita where he actually sees reality for what it is? And it's good and... Yeah, whatever. So this is just fables, right? He's just saying, well, well look, when, when you go to the three pigs house and the three pigs opens the book of knowledge, this is, what, what, is, what does this have to do with some kind of rational philosophy? Well, where, where, how is this at all? You're going to go into the sun. Yeah, that's all a nice metaphor, but has absolutely nothing to do with how we acquire understanding. And has nothing to do with the facts that we've acquired, which are pretty dismal. So... Where, where, do you, where do you get this shit from? Oh, that's right, you just make it up because it's another silly story to tell people to make it all all right. And it's not all all right. Bad at the same time. He's also almost driven by, mad by it as well, but he, and he wants, he begs Krishna eventually to stop showing him what reality is. But you get the impression that it wasn't bad, really. It was just overwhelming. Um, well, well, isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't bad. It was over. Oh, it was too good. It was just too good. Yeah. I couldn't watch anymore. It's just too much fun. Yeah. Show me some more people, you know, run over on the street. And then there's, of course, the Ned Flanders view. No matter what evidence we have, you know, this Panglossian optimism. Uh, yeah, whatever. And exactly how is that different from you? How is Ned Flanders any different than you? I mean, y you have gloss just as much. At least his gloss is on something. You're just saying, I don't need gloss. I don't need good because I can live on suffering. I can feed on the suffering. That's all you're saying. <laughs> so yeah, Ned Flanders is a lot less scary than you are must be maintained no matter what. Um, three options as opposed to two. The universe is wonderful. The universe is horrible. The universe just is. Mm, yeah, well, obviously, like I said, that's just logically incongruous. It, the, the choice you're choosing is the same for both of the alternatives. That is already included. The universe is, is already established as a fact by the people making judgments about it. And this glib statement, I'm just going to say that whatever it is, is acceptable. That's all you're saying. You're not saying why this current condition is acceptably balanced. You're not explaining where this 
balance came from, uh, who imposed the balance. Oh, it was just luck. So if we live 10 years shorter by nature, that would be okay. If we, you know, spent five more years dying, that would be okay. It doesn't matter what, what I changed. You would still just be able to glibly say, it's balanced. Wouldn't matter how much more suffering there was. If we had two sets of teeth that rotted and, you know, gave us horrendous pain and suffering, that'd be, if we had two gallbladders, that would be okay. Double the gallbladders, double the fun. If we had twice as much pancreatic cancer, it doesn't matter what I change, you're just going to say it's okay. doesn't matter I could make it 6 million Jews in the Holocaust. Well, make it 12 million Jews in the Holocaust. There's no number that will, that will stifle you. There's no number that will give you any pause. So there's 674 teeth in the, in the Tyrannosaurus jaw. Well, make it 12,000 teeth. I'm going to still walk right out in front of it and let it bite my fucking head off. Well, I'm going to let it bite my kid's head off. I mean, this is just, this is not philosophy, this isn't intelligent, this isn't reasonable, this isn't sensible, it's just, it's just fucking closed-minded, glib crap. They tend to go along with the idea that the universe just is, but that looking behind the scenes will give you knowledge, looking beyond what you're eyes tell you will give you knowledge that won't necessarily make you happy, but it'll make you a more complete being, and it certainly won't horrify you in the sense of Zapfi's moment of existence. Yeah, whatever. So he's arguing that it won't horrify you. Not even until when it shows up and gets you. You won't be horrified. I, trust me, I think you're going to be horrified. When it shows up to finish you off, you're going to be horrified. You're going to be saying stupid things like, I didn't think it could get this bad. Existential panic. I felt that existential panic. I know what it's like. But I'm living proof that it can be overcome. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, you felt existential panic. Well, someday maybe you're going to feel something like real, some sort of real suffering. And then you'll know what we were talking about then you'll understand that a day in that Poeskian dungeon isn't going to be worth the best potato soup in the universe. It just isn't. Or at least it means you've become to terms with. Um, yeah, all right, all right. It's just so, this is so silly. It's like a Christian saying, well, my faith comforts me, and it's all comforting and comforting. Yeah, so you can lie to yourself and play some other game than reality. And I'm clearly arguing you're playing some other game than reality. I'm pointing out how you are totally unrealistic and that your counter-arguments of it's absurd with no counter-argument are absurd. These are absurd counter-arguments. Okay, you have to have something called evidence. You have no evidence of your mystical anything. You have no evidence of your your arbitrary and bending and twisty universe. You have no evidence of your, um, what did we do to make it all okay? How was it a fair exchange? If all the bad happened to one group of people and all the good happened to another group of people, can you realistically really say those bad ones, the ones doing the paying, are somehow not important enough for you to be paused as one of the profiters? Come on. And if you ask me, is both the route to that existential panic and the means out of it, if you ask me, or at least if there is any other... Yeah, well, once again, this panic thing, you know, you know so the, this is the presumption that your real problem in life is the panic over what? Yeah, I don't, sorry, I don't, I don't even, I can't cognize this sense of panic over nothing specific. The panic is over something specific, that there's way too much suffering for way too little profit. That's the panic, that we're running a loss. There's blood pouring out of the body, and there's nobody doing anything rational to stop it. That's the panic. I haven't discovered it yet. Not that I'm anything of an adept at this, but um, mysticism does really seem to be 
the rag by which one wipes the film off the window in order to see what's being... Okay, now does this make any sense to any of you people? Really, this is a rational kind of statement to make that somehow mysticism creates clarity? Hmm? Yeah, I don't think so. Beyond a lot more clearly. Might not be paradise beyond, but... Um, I would certainly say it's worth the effort finding out the truth. Yeah, and it, his truth is the victims die, so it's all okay. So as long as, if, if you look, if you're a, a, a terrible, horrible, if whatever crime, criminal you kind of are, make sure you kill your victims and then it's okay. So even if you're a petty thief, kill the victim, then it doesn't matter. They don't need their $50, but they're dead. Yeah, it's, it solves all the problems. Just kill the victims. Because once they're dead, it doesn't matter that they did anything. And certainly it undoes suffering. So yes, you can torture them first all you want. You can torture them for days or weeks or years. You can torture somebody in your, in your garage for absolutely years. And by this guy's philosophy, it's okay because you finally killed them. It all worked out just fine. Because they're dead. And being dead somehow undoes everything. It didn't happen because they're dead. Okay, yeah, that is too ludicrous. It seems that almost any cognizing brain, a brain that can tell the difference between a spoon and a fork, should be able to say, that doesn't make any sense. That would be my expectation, anyway. So, the, yeah, this really is not, you know, I mean, I'm really not arguing with regular people. I mean, regular people want what he's saying to be true, to be true. But I think they know the reasoning he's using to get to his bibble-babble-boo, you know, silver lining crapola, that that is obnoxiously silly. That it doesn't matter because they die. The victims die, therefore it doesn't matter. All the pain in the Holocaust, all those people, all the time spent agonizing and suffering in those concentration camps, all of it didn't mean anything because they're all dead. Yeah, I really just don't think there's too many people profoundly retarded enough to think that's a reasonable argument. But they'll keep rewarding him. Why? Well, because he's on their side. So even though he's a psychotic lunatic, they'll keep applauding because he's rooting for the Mets. So what, is, what does that mean? You know, he's bad, but I mean, really, the people applauding have got to be called worse. <laughs> because they know the logic he's using is insane. So yeah, the people saying, good job, Anaconavod, probably have to be almost worse than him, because the flaws of his logic are so obvious, and yet they're applauding. 